Hello and welcome to another Primal Health Coach Institute Coaches Corner. We've got various participants joining in now. Welcome back, Anne and Maria. Um, we'll wait just a minute or two to let other people pop on in today. We've got a wonderful show here with you. Welcome, Bruce. Welcome back. All right. So we are we are here with primal coach Ryan Baxter. We're so blessed to have him here with us talking to our community today. So we'll go ahead and get started. And for those that are joining in, please do so. Get yourself comfortable. Welcome, Mindy. Um, really great to see the crowd coming back. We have a wonderful community here at Primal Health. And this is another day where we're we're picking the minds and the expertise and the hearts of those that have been doing this, um, you know, doing this work, serving in this incredible profession of health coaching. So, Ryan, it's such a pleasure to have you here. It's been an enjoy, enjoyable time to get to know you and prepare for this. Um, will you share with us a little bit about your story, how you got here? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. And thanks for everyone for joining and uh, everyone that's going to listen in the replay. Um, I'm really honored to to be part of this. Um, yeah, so my journey, I guess, to where I'm at today to becoming a primal health coach um, started, I was actually just looking uh, when I first got certified and it was uh, actually back in 2016. Nice. <laughs> so uh, it's been um a little bit of time now um, that I've I've been a health coach, and uh, this all kind of started uh, back when I graduated college. Actually, um, I'm uh, my growing up and my degree from university is in computer science, so I was a big computer nerd, or am a big computer nerd. <laughs> um, I'm still a full time software engineer. Um, so I, uh, like, you know, many people have a full-time job and, and work part-time as a, as a health coach. Um, so I, we can talk a little bit about how to navigate that, Absolutely. <laughs> that, that That's situation. Really no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it started back when I graduated college. Um, I started to realize that, uh, well, the, my wife who I was dating at the time, she was kind of interested in running road races. I was like, well, it sounds kind of fun. I've never really been a guy, like typical computer nerd. I've never been someone who's interested in sports. I didn't play sports growing up. I wasn't really active, but I was like, well, maybe now's time to actually do something physical with my body <laughs> instead of sitting in front of a computer uh, for my entire life. And, um, but I didn't really, I didn't know desire to run on a road, but I found um, obstacle course racing that was, you know, some interesting to me because it was, I kind of had a, a, an affinity for being out in nature. Uh, being mm -hmm. in the woods and that stuff. I always like that. Um, and so a lot of obstacle course racing takes place out on trails. And uh, so it's kind of like trail running with, you know, obstacles thrown in the middle of it, basically. And so I decided to like, I'll sign up for one of those and see how it goes. <clears throat> and uh, I actually ended up falling in love with it. You did. And, and uh, yeah, I really loved it. My wife actually did it with me and she hated it. So, <laughs> 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 but I, I loved it. Um, so, uh we uh well i i basically kind of dove headfirst into obstacle course racing and like not having any any athletic background i didn't know really where to begin mm -hmm. on that journey um and so i started you know looking around for stuff online I eventually came across this guy named ben greenfield which i'm sure many people have heard of before uh he was into obstacle course and racing at the time and so i um started listening to his podcast and one day he had on uh, this guy named Mark Sisson mm -hmm. and uh, Mark Sisson was talking about his new book and his new book happened to be called Primal Endurance. Yeah. And so at this time when I was trying to figure out how to train and fuel for endurance races, he had just come out with this book and I just with no other better options or no other leads. <laughs> uh, I was like, well, I'll pick up this book and, and kind of see what it's all about. And so that's where I was first introduced to paleo primal ancestral mm -hmm. health. Um, and being kind of that type a personality, uh, like very nerdy detailed oriented person. Like I dove like head first into all things paleo primal 
endurance training exercise. And, um, you know, I really liked it. Um, and so with the help of, of that book from, from Mark and Brad, um, I, I was able to complete several more obstacle course races wow. um, it, in the, and, and do it, you know, fairly well. But um, I actually went so far though in, in this direction that I ended up negatively affecting my health. Like, but I drastically improved my health along the way, right? Like, I, you know, cut out all the the junk food and, you know, switch to a, a paleo primal diet. And then at the same time, keto was becoming super popular. And I'm like, well, you know, let's, let's see what this is all about. And dove headfirst into keto. And, but at the same time I was training like a madman and like, you know, I was super lean, <laughs> um, like way too skinny. Um, and just doing too much exercise and the, the diet that I was following was for, someone who is not, um, you know, as active as I was or in the same situation that I was. And so I was underfueled. I ended up having developing some, some gut infections. I had C. diff. I had, um, you know, candida. Oh, no. Uh, my testosterone was in the tank. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't able to like, I had my, my daughter was very young at the time. I wasn't like, I didn't have the energy to, to be a good father and like, uh, you know, I kind of went way too far in the other direction where being quote unquote healthy, uh, was actually negatively affecting my health at the time. And I ended up coming across, uh, another podcast called, um, uh, um, sorry, uh, uh, someone else called, uh, Chris Kelly. Um, and, uh, he, he was working with, uh, Dr. Tommy Wood at the time. I'm sure many people have heard Dr. Tommy Wood's name before. And they were running a coaching practice, helping athletes like me in the coaching practice called Nourish, Balance, Thrive. And, um, you know, helping people who have like, you know, are like athletes, but trying to do it in a healthy fashion and, you know, have developed all these issues. Uh, I ended up getting a lot of help from them. Um, they were, you know, ran through a lot of my blood work and did all kinds of tests. And, you know, I spent a lot of time working with them, you know, in a, in a, in a health coaching fashion and uh, eventually kind of turn my health around, um, through kind of fueling properly as an athlete and learning to recover and learning the importance of sleep and, mm. you know, training properly and all this other stuff. Um, and after I was done with that journey and I mean, I was never, re I'm never, you're never really done with your journey, but, mm. you know, after I had kind of healed myself to the point where I felt like I was, you know, on the right path, I decided that I wanted to help other people. You know, I wanted to help other people avoid the same mistakes that I had fallen into. Um, and again, falling back to, you know, being a, a follower of Mark, I came across the Primal Health Coach Institute and ended up getting certified after that. Um, so I could, um, help other people. So that's how I eventually landed where I am in this, in this health coaching journey. Wow, Ryan, I really want to acknowledge you. Um, and I appreciate, um, you slowing down to share your, your backstory. I mean, it's, I, I feel moved by the, the piece, the acknowledgement of like, you know, here you were and like the roles we take on, like, oh, I'm this computer nerd and this is who I am. And then, you know, when you discovered an obstacle course race, like, I mean, as I heard that, I just like interpreted it as like nature enveloping you and saying like, come outside, come mm -hmm. play with us. And you just dove right in and, mm -hmm you know, gave it your all and you had some incredible role models, you know, um, to, to jump into this whole new world. And then here you are an athlete and just kind of going like full force and then seeing what happens there too, you know, too much to like how to like dial it. And then, you know, I, what I love about your story too, is like how you continue to seek out role models and others mm -hmm that have uh, maybe a little bit more experience to help, to help you sort out your, you know, your internal, you know, challenges. And then as you overcame them and had, you know, regained the strength again, you're like, oh, wow. Like, how may I take this and then be of service? Right. Yeah. And it's, it really speaks like that, that concept of that people beginning coaches always uh, kind of struggle with of like imposter syndrome. Yeah. That's like a real thing. Um, but you quickly realize that like you always have something to share with someone else and you're never really an imposter. Right. right. Um, it's okay 
if you don't like if you don't know something like it's okay to say you don't know but at the same time like you just have to be one step ahead of the client that you're working with <laughs> just one little step right uh and when you start out you know you're really just sharing your own experience you know that you have and that that's like can be light years ahead of a lot of people like it, it took me that whole journey which i summed up in 10 minutes was yeah. a, a course of like four years you know I was um, curious about that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so like that's four years of experience that you're like, my goal was to try and save someone else from having to suffer through. Right. Yeah. Um, and so that's, that's a lot of experience that you have to to offer to other people. And so, yeah, it is, it is, um, it's a, it's a, you have to realize that you have so much to offer um, because imagine that all the people are just where you were four years ago. Right. Um, they're right. just starting out and they don't know and you have that four years under your belt mm -hmm. and so share with us how like so then in 2016 you got certified um, you're still you know you're you're focused on healing your own gut and you know re, mm -hmm. you know rebuilding your own reservoirs also being of service it sounds like you're a dad at this point too mm -hmm. and you're a full-time software engineer like yeah. how have you you know managed all that what's what's worked for you yeah, I mean, I have a, a little bit of an advantage here, uh, which I'll admit is that um, you know, my my software engineering role uh, allows me a lot of flexibility and freedom because I I work from home. Um, I don't, you know, I work for a great team and a great company that is not like on my back all the time. So as long as I get my work done, I put in my eight hours. You know, whatever that looks like for me is that no one cares about. Like, you know, I'm, I'm producing the way I need to, and so that's all that matters. Um, so I have a lot of flexibility in that role and that means that I can structure my day however I please. Um, yeah. it, it's obviously that that job pays my bills. So it's very important to me and it is a priority. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it's a priority before my health coaching business is. Yeah. Um, but I've, you know, with that flexibility, I've been able to develop a business that, you know, is a, is provides me some financial resources, but also provides me a lot of like satisfaction from being able to help other people in like a role that in a, in a job that gives back and I'm my own boss. And so there's a lot of benefits there. Um, but it takes a lot of, a lot of scheduling. <laughs> you have to be a planner. Um, yeah. I, you know, I'm very structured about my day. Um, you know, so, so to fit in, my responsibilities in my job, my responsibility as a father and a husband of two kids now, um, you know, and then all my other training and all, you know, goals that I have for myself personally, uh, from, from an athlete point of view, uh, it's, it's a very structured lifestyle that I live. I like that personally. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I dedicate specific parts of my day, specific parts uh, of my week, to I know exactly when I'm going to write my blog post. I know exactly when I'm going to create my video. I know exactly when I have my client meetings. I know exactly when I have them turn all that off and I need to dedicate and go into full software engineering mode and like turn everything else off, right? Um, and so I, you know, structure my week and my day in a very specific way so that I know exactly what I need to do and how much time I'm going to allocate towards that thing. And it doesn't always work out that way. Right. right. There's certainly times where things come up where my my ideal, what I want to do is not going to happen. And I have to be OK with that. And it's tough for me as a type A person to be OK with that. Like some <laughs> some weeks it's it's not good. But, you know, one of the things that I think is the most valuable and we can talk about this in more detail later. But one of the most valuable things that I think you can do as a coach is produce content. You know, if you want to attract people, you need to have content to share with them to attract you to. Mm -hmm. And so like, I'm, I, I try, my goal is to write a blog post every week, a short newsletter every week and a video every week. Um, and sometimes I'm able to accomplish those things. Right. Uh, and sometimes I'm not, but as you go along, one of the things that I, the hacks that I found out, if you're consistent with all, all that stuff, you have a reservoir of content. Right. And so you can always like if my week goes to hell and I can't write my blog post and I can't keep a video, create a video and I can't do my newsletter. 
I have two years worth of blog posts and videos that I can repurpose mm-hmm. and serve back up now because I built up that reservoir. Um, so putting in that effort over time kind of gives you some more flexibility, more and more flexibility as you move along in your journey as a, as a coach uh, from a content creator perspective. So kind of actually you gain more time because you always have stuff to go back to uh, because there's, you know, the, the blog post that you wrote two years ago, most of the people that follow you today never saw that, right? right? And so as you you can just use that same blog post again this week that you had from two years ago and, you know, 90% of the people that follow you have never seen it before. And even if they did follow you, they probably forgot that you even wrote it two years ago right. because, you know, the, you know, it was yeah. two years ago and that's probably the least important thing that they read at that time. Uh, but this it might resonate great. might resonate with them today, right? So you never yeah, know. Yeah, no, um, this is great. And Ryan, I'd like to just, I want to honor the systems that you've created. And I'm also hearing something that like translates probably from your coaching practice too, into how you run your coaching business. Like you have systems, whether that's systems of scheduling or mm-hmm. systems of content creating, and then backups to those systems in case like things don't go as planned. And yeah. I imagine, you know, that that translates too into how you're working with people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The system thing is like a very important thing. Like I, you know, um, I, I have like specific ways that I like to communicate with my clients. Um, and they know that every other week we have a check-in call. They know where to go to schedule that check-in call. Um, they know, you know, I, we know where we, log our workouts, our exercise routines, our food, all that stuff, you know, going over that stuff and getting that all kind of straight and automated so that I can just go in and check what I need to do. They can, you know, they have my email, they have my text, text, you know, my, my, um, my, my phone number, if they need to text me for any reason or need to have an emergency and stuff like that. Uh, But for most part, like all this stuff is like automated and like on the weekends, like I'll go through and, you know, I'll take my Saturday morning and make sure, everyone's like, you know, where they need to be. If there's anyone that I need to like, you know, get on top of because they've been skipping workouts or I haven't seen them, you know, log anything in their, in their food journal for a little bit. And I know like, okay, I need to send this person a message and, you know, get, you know, see what's going on or whatever. But for the most part, like I I try to automate and systemize as much as I possibly can. And it's nothing terribly complex, like chronometer and coach catalyst or like, okay. That's you know, yeah, yeah, those are my two like main pieces of software, uh, mm-hmm. and then acu- acuity scheduling is the other one that I use for like okay. just scheduling calendar stuff like that. Oh, this is um, great. Yeah, so those are like those are the things that I um I really ninety percent of my business is is run on that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And I just want to remind that the the participants that are here today, feel free to write some questions as they come up. You can do it in the chat box or in the in the questions box. And I'll be sure to get that to Ryan live. But this is all like some meaty stuff. And I feel curious, like, will you will you take us back to 2016? Because a lot of the community here, they're either still in the um, health, the primal health coaching program, you know, first first level or they're moving on. They're in the ACE program and they haven't really like started their business yet. And what I appreciate about hearing, you know, by you keeping your day job and your day job is quite flexible, what I'm hearing is it cre- it creates the stability and then you've been able to have fun as well as create consistency with your systems of growing your, you know, your side business, but that brings you so much satisfaction and fulfillment and even extra resources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 a it's a great you know uh, I, I think I've kind of found the sweet spot with that. Um, but like again, I think my my day job allows me a lot of flexibility. But I don't think it's impossible if you, even if you have the, like a very strict day job, you have you know uh, nine to five, and you you're stuck in an office at a computer desk or whatever. Like you know you have that you know uh, try to carve out some time in your evenings or on the weekends and stuff like that. And I you know. You have to hustle sometimes. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, that if that's the path you're going to take, you have to, you know, accept that sometimes you're going to spend your nights and, and some time on your weekends to get it done. Um, you know, I'm not saying like ignore your family, but, you know, you got to, if you really want to make it happen, sometimes you got to, you know, carve out some some time you might be, your free time you might have. Otherwise, you, you have to dedicate to your business. Um, but like everything, if you put in the hard work, I think, you know, the, like I said, it starts to pay pays dividends and it becomes a little bit easier over time. 
Um, and you're again, if you have a day job and, and you're like me, you enjoy it and you know, there's no reason you don't have a, a rush to leave it. Like then no rush, like take your time. Like you don't have to get this all perfect overnight within the next month, year, two years, whatever. If you enjoy your day job and you enjoy doing what you're doing and you just want to do this as a, a side hustle and you know, your goal isn't to replace your day job, then take your time. Like there's, there's no rush. Yeah. There's, you yeah. know, you can do these things as, as you have time to get through them. So, yeah. And that takes and the that, pressure off as opposed to like somebody that like leaves their day job maybe a little too soon. And then they feel the pressure around like creating clients or like, mm -hmm. you know, that it can be really, um, it, it can be more stressful. And I think that comes across during mm -hmm. the whole enrollment process and building. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got Sarah yeah, Hostis is here. Saying, yeah, hey, Sarah's, <laughs> Sarah, Sarah's a fair, uh, fellow coach, mm -hmm. kick-ass coach for sure. Um, the, I was, I was going to say that, that, that same mentality applies to people who are in the middle of, the, of going through the course of, you know, people are always in a rush to like, oh, you know, I want to get this done. I want to get it done. You know, and one of the things that attracted me originally to the primal health coach course was like, the, it was self-paced and I could take as long as I need to, because I knew I had a full-time job and two young kids and that I needed the flexibility to whenever I had a spare moment that I was going to dedicate to this course, it just needed to you know, I needed the flexibility of time, you know, so that I could take as long as I needed to, to get through it. Um, and so just like, if there's no, it's not life or death, you know, just take your time, you know, and as you take your time and you're consistent, you know, just like with your own health journey, if you're, we're talking to a client about going through a health journey, like if there's no rush, you don't have to lose the weight tomorrow. All we're looking for is consistently doing the things day after day after day. And if you do that, over a long enough period of time, you'll get to where you want to be, right? And that's true of getting navigating, starting a business and and becoming a coach too. Yeah, well said. I I can very much appreciate that, Ryan. And it's like a perfect lead in too to like, you know, so what happens, you know, this whole like take your time uh, mentality. And then how does that translate when you're working with a client or a prospective client on um, you know, removing the whole like one size fits all, because I know that in the primal mm. world, paleo world, keto world, it can be very much like this is the way. And from your story <laughs> and from many of us here, you know, we can probably, you know, relate to like, uh, it doesn't really work like that. Will you share more about how you approach working with people around this no one size fits all? Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it all stems from my own like most of us, like uh, it all stems from my own journey, right? I, I thought that keto was the way and it, it was not the way for me. Like it, it worked up until a point and then it was detrimental to my health. Right. And I had to switch my own mindset to be like, okay, like eating a banana is actually beneficial to my health. Right. Whereas, you know, a lot of people in the keto space would, would say that you're like, going to kill yourself. But for me, not eating the banana was, was hurting my health, literally hurting me. Um, and so the thing that, uh, one of the other reasons why I promise I'm not being paid for this interview, but one of the other reasons why I, I enjoyed or was attracted to the primal, uh, health coach course and certification is because it's, there's so much flexibility underneath the primal, um, umbrella, right? Uh, it's not just we are the, the keto health coach course or we are the the paleo health coach course. Like there's a lot out of any kind of framework out there around health and ancestral health. I think primal is the most encompassing one because mm -hmm. it it provides a framework that that all these other things, these other you know named protocols or diets or lifestyles, they all kind of fit under this umbrella, right? And so you get this foundational, um, you know, knowledge about how to structure a, a, a healthy diet, how to, you know, you know, sleep well, how to exercise, how to move, how to manage stress, the importance of community, this complete umbrella of how to live a healthy life. And then you can tweak different aspects of that framework to fit the clients. Right. Because I quickly learned and, you know, uh, you know, myself that you can't just apply what you hear, uh, you know, verbatim on XYZ podcast yeah. uh, to yourself or anyone else, because 
you're completely missing the context in which that person is speaking to right? most of the time, right? You're, you're not that person. You didn't grow up that person. You don't have the history of that person. You don't have the same lifestyle of that person, et cetera. Um, does that mean that what they're saying isn't going to work for you? No, but it it's just means that what they're saying and what worked for them happened in a completely different context than you or your client or anyone else. So uh, I go into working with clients it, with the mindset of like anything is on the table, right? I, I need to listen to this person and understand where they're coming from, what their goals are, what their struggles are, what their constraints are in their life. And then I need to take what I've learned as a coach and with this primal mindset in mind and then pull the different levers to, mm -hmm. to tweak it to fit their lifestyle. So for, for if I was someone like myself, you know, my history coming to someone saying, I have, you know, I'm an athlete. I do these endurance races. I'm really struggling with my energy. My hormones are in the tank and et cetera, et cetera. You know, I'm going to tell that person, okay, you need to eat more food. Carbohydrates are your friend. Let's focus on whole food carbs. Let's focus on stress. Let's, let's try and navigate your workouts because maybe you're overtraining a little bit. Let's, you know, but then if I have someone else coming to me, who's a hundred pounds overweight, they don't exercise, their sleep is garbage. They have all the usual lifestyle stressors of, you know, young kids and tough job. And, you know, you know, that approach is going to be really different. I'm going to tell this person like, Hey, let's just focus on whole foods. Like let's, you know, what maybe, you know, let's actually, let's do this. The, the next three weeks, all I want you to do is add a vegetable to your plate. Right. Uh, and I want you to take a 10 minute walk after each meal. Right. All I want you to do for the next three weeks. Right. Right. Because that person doesn't, I don't need to tell them you're going hardcore keto because they don't need to that, that all they need to do is eat a little bit more vegetables and move their body a little bit. And they're going to see massive changes, right? <laughs> um, I don't need to go, you know, tell them to up, you know, up heal or, up, you know, to rehaul their entire lifestyle, you know, to, to get any kind of results. Um, so you gotta, you gotta really just kind of look at the person, listen to their story, listen to their background where they're coming from, you know, what are their goals? What are their struggles? And then, like I said, take what you're learning as in the, in the primal health coach course and just, you know, tweak it to fit what their needs are. Right. And it doesn't have to be extreme. You don't have to be married to, you know, this diet is the only way you can eat or like you, mm -hmm. you have to do these exercises. You have to, you know, get 10 minutes of hit and do 10,000 steps a day and do six strength training sessions, hitting full body and all this, like, that's great. But, you know, that might not be what that person needs at this time. Right. Um, that's great. The, the, the piece where you said like, you know, anything is on the table. Um, yeah. it, it creates safety for the, mm -hmm. for the, the person on the other, on the other end, you know, and they want to know that they can, you know, be honest with you. And then what I love about your approach around for the next three weeks, all you've got to do is add a vegetable to your plate and take a walk, a 10 minute walk after your meal. You know, it's, it's doable. And it, and it matches that piece you were talking about earlier, small steps done consistently over time, make massive progress. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just, uh, you know, for that person, I just want to, you know, I'm just looking for to get some small wins to get yeah. the ball moving, right. Get, let's get the ball moving the right direction. Um, oftentimes, you know, we're, we get excited as coaches, which is great. And we want to, you right. know, spew all this knowledge that we have in our heads off to the client. And then just like, yeah. it's like a, you know, a, the getting slapped in the face, you know, with all this stuff, it's overwhelming. Yeah. And they're like, I can't do all this. And then they feel like failures and it just sets them up for, I'd rather feel them like, I'd rather have them be underwhelmed, like leave the meeting be like, well, that's all I really need to do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, and then come back to me a couple of weeks later and be like, Hey, I lost like five pounds, you know, and I didn't do anything really you have to do anything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. that's what I'd rather have them do than be like, Oh man, I have all the stuff that I have to do. And I don't know how I'm going to do this. And, you know, it's completely overwhelming. They feel like a failure and they don't do anything and they get discouraged. And so, yeah. Gosh, that's Ryan, just... this is so helpful. <laughs> no, I wish I would have heard you back. I mean, I got certified in 2018 and definitely when I launched my practice, it was very much like, let's change your life in 90 days. And I would be <laughs> hard on myself if by like week eight, they weren't counting carbs and like they yeah. hadn't had it when really like we're working on water and more whole yeah. foods, 
you know? Yeah. So, you know, years later, I have a totally different approach. It's more aligned with what you're saying and how helpful to like, you know, take our enthusiasm around primal, you know, in this way of living and really create safety to, mm -hmm. and what I'm, what I'm hearing from you is like, you meet your clients where they are and work yeah. from them. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta definitely meet with, meet them where there are and start there. Um, yeah. cause you don't want to set them up for, for failure right from the start either. Right. right. So, yeah, definitely. Right. And so how does that work? How does that work? Because, you know, I remember you saying that you're you've done a few like small group programs. Like, tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about that. How do you apply this like individualized approach within a group? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I've just uh, kind of dove into the group space after, you know, eight or so years of doing this. So, um, you know, people who you know, I have no 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 uh, ill feelings about, you know, diving straight into group stuff. But I I personally enjoy the more one on one uh interactions with clients i like one-on-one -on -one coaching it's it's kind of my wheelhouse but i realize that like i can't I, i'm able to impact more people and it's accessible to more people and um so i i kind of you know toyed with the idea for a long time and eventually one of the things that you know i realized after writing so many blog posts and creating so many videos and stuff like I have enough content here already written to create a group coaching program um, that literally I have 30 days of lessons and it's all repurposed blogs or videos that I had already created. So I didn't, you know, I didn't actually have to do anything to create the content. I just had it all and I just had to organize it essentially. So that's the other benefit of being consistent with your content creation. Um, and so I had all that content to put together. And I said, well, let me try this out. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll see how it goes the first time. And the, so the first time I ran it was in the fall uh, last year. I'm sorry, uh, in the summer of uh, the, this summer. This past summer was the first time I did it. Um, and I got, you know, 10 or so people to sign up, which is which is fine for me to dip, dip my toes in the water. Um, and um, well, that's a sizable group. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that, my, that was my goal is to get 10 people. And and so I, I got I got the 10 and I was I was happy with that um and so what i what i like about what i think the benefit is you know the detriment is you're not working with these people one-on-one -on -one, but you know you are still able to offer value with the content that you get you know i have a, a weekly less a daily lesson they get a lesson every day so you're you're able to offer some some content to them some insights to them every day i always i also think that in a group it's important to have a community uh, access to, you know, pro a piece of that group coaching, right? So that they can, all the participants can interact with each other. You can interact with them at the same time. Um, I think community is one of like the key, one of the benefits of group coaching uh, because people just, it's hard to find others who are on the similar path, have similar mindset, similar, you know, interests and values and stuff like that. And when you can start to pull several people who are interested in ancestral health together, like they find a lot of value in that. So, um, you know, whether it's a Facebook group or, or, or something else, having a community for your group coaching, I think is in invaluable. Um, yeah. It has that like shared reality. They don't feel so alone. Um, yeah. it's, you know, it's, yeah. And it takes some pressure off of you too, as the facilitator, what I, what I like to say yeah. around like groups, it's like, it's like, it's our job to create the template and create the space and make safety within the space. And then mm -hmm. the people, the people bring the magic, you know, yeah, like they what comes up, it like helps to like add to the content. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of, <laughs> in fact, one of the benefits I get out of as a coach is like, as I, as I interact with the community, I come up with great content ideas, right? Cause they, they'll ask questions or we'll have discussions about something. And I'm like, oh, that makes a great, for a great video or that makes a great yeah. blog post or whatever. So um, I, you know, I get, you know, some, something out of it as well. Yeah. Um, and then I do a weekly zoom call with them. So the, the program is four weeks long. I do a weekly zoom call. So we get four, four zoom calls, uh, during the week. Uh, that's probably the hardest part because trying to schedule times that, are, <laughs> that most people can, can, uh, can get together is kind of the toughest thing, but, right. um, you know, I do that. So that, that 
add some level of individualization because we can have kind of a, a group discussion if they have a question or a struggle that they're having, you know, I can address that, you know, within the group, but specifically towards their situation. Uh, and then this, this cohort that I'm running right now for the fall, um, I actually offered everyone a free one hour one-on-one -on -one session with me uh, as part of joining the, the community um, or joining the program. So they get one hour with me uh, if they choose to sign up, you know, they don't have to, but um, they get one hour with me to discuss any personal things that they want to talk about in a, in a one-on-one setting. And I've had a, you know, most of them at this point, because I only have one, one week left in the program and they've been great. Um, you know, the, the feedback I've gotten from the people who have had them has been extremely positive um, really? and, and really impactful. So uh, that's been another way to provide some level of individualization in a, in a group setting as well. So. Oh, good, good. And I imagine yeah. that supports like filling the one-on-one -on -one roster and it just kind of, you know, continues yeah. to fuel your creativity, your, you know, you know, passion to serve too, you know, not only individually and, and with clients. Yeah, um, it provided, yeah, I, I did get a, so I did get a one-on-one -on -one client out of the, the first cohort that I ran nice. um, that signed up for a year. And then, um, the other thing was, um, yeah, they, it also provides great testimonials. Right. Uh, so one of the things that I do at the end is I, I give everyone a feedback survey, and, you know, ask for what you liked, what you didn't like. And uh, some of the feedback that I got from the first cohort, you know, provided for great like testimonial quotes that you can then, you know, put on your website or put in your, your content for the next round. You're like, here's what past participants said, you know, and you can quote them. And so it provides some some good stuff too for you as a coach. Yeah, it does. And it just builds upon itself. This yep. is really great. So tell us more. Earlier you were you were noting like um, you know, some of the systems you were building. Mm -hmm. And maybe it was around content creation, but I want to circle back to that. And I also want to invite mm -hmm. the participants, please, you know, write some questions in the chat. What has sparked you about what Ryan's been sharing? Um, he is he's here with us. We've got about 20 more minutes. And like, this is, this is for our community. So feel, feel free to do that. I see uh, Maria had a question about creating content there. She has okay. to, um, you suggest creating content blogs, videos now before starting coaching your coaching career. Um, yes, 100%. Yes. Uh, I think that your, it's never too early to start, number one. There's nothing stopping you from writing a blog. Like you don't have to be certified to write a blog or create a video. You see people who have no knowledge whatsoever putting stuff out there all the time, <laughs> um, which is a good and bad thing. But, um, you know, don't feel intimidated. Um, if you have something to share, even if you think it's like super simple, um, start creating content now. It's it's the I'll, I'll kind of come back to this in a second, but like, it's, it's one of the, the most important things that I learned and I wish I had learned earlier. I wish I had started while I was getting certified, mm -hmm. uh, creating content. Um, I, I was my, my coach, uh, Dr. Mike T. Nelson, he, he's my, my, my coach. Um, he held a, a mentorship uh, a couple of years ago, um, which I participated in for, for coaches to, you know, learn from him and how he runs his business, et cetera. Um, and I'm one of the, the, there was a million takeaways from that, but one of the takeaways that he ingrained in us, um, when I went through that mentorship was to prioritize creating content, um, and do it with a, a cadence, a cadence, uh, pick some cadence and do it, stick to that cadence. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, I enjoy writing long form stuff. Not everyone does that, but I enjoy writing blog posts. And so I would, I write a blog post, try to write a blog post every week. If you go to my, you know, rjbhelp.coach, my, my webpage, click on blog, you'll see hundreds of blog posts. <laughs> um, and uh, that, you know, I, like I said, I try to do that weekly. Um, and uh, I, I put that out there and uh, I share it. Um, on Instagram, I share it on Facebook, <clears throat> excuse me, I share in different communities that I belong to, different groups that I belong to on, on Facebook. So if you go and look at the Mark da Mark's Daily Apple group, like you'll see 
every week, you know, on Wednesday, Brian shares his blog post that he wrote, you know, wrote for that week. Um, yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah. And, um, and yeah, so share with your friends, share in groups that you belong to, you know, whatever it might be. Um, and just, you know, you might not, you might hear crickets, you might not hear anything, you know, that doesn't mean that someone's not going to, you know, come across it eventually and it will resonate with them. Right. Just, don't be discouraged about it, even if it seems like no one's paying attention, uh, because eventually as your audience grows, like I said, you can go back and reshare the stuff that when you had, you know, when you had a very small audience and no one saw it before, uh, and that will, you know, resonate with someone eventually. Um, but yeah, I think don't, it's never too early to start creating content, whether it's videos, blog posts, short newsletter, start a newsletter. I think starting a newsletter is the most underrated thing and easiest thing right. you could possibly do. Uh, start you know, writing to a newsletter. You're not going to have anyone on the newsletter to begin with. It might just be your mom or it might be your dad or it might just be your wife or your husband. Uh, <laughs> doesn't really matter. Pretend like the number, the, don't pay attention to the numbers. Just, you know, get in the habit and develop the routine uh, because that, you know, that routine, that will grow and that routine will just pay off, um, you know, as as time goes on. That's super helpful. Thank you so much, Ryan. And yeah. Paul, is asking like did most of your clients do do they come from content like your social media posts or your blogs Mm -hmm. and then his follow-up question is what programs did you say you use acuity and coach catalyst so let's talk a little bit more about that yeah so the best way i have found to get clients is to become a part of a community like an online community Um, like i said mark's daily apple or um, you know, Rob Wolf was hosting the the Healthy Rebellion at some point. Like these are two like communities that I've gotten tons of clients from. And you don't even necessarily have to share content. You just need to answer people's questions. So people go into those communities and they'll ask a question like, I'm struggling with, you know, figuring out the right amount of carbs to eat, or I'm struggling with how to incorporate, you know, high intensity interval training into my exercise routine, or I'm struggling with whatever, right? And again, you, you don't need to be a certified coach to answer these questions, but like you're a coach and you have knowledge in some of these areas and you have more knowledge than the person asking the question. So just answer it in a very respectful, you know, manner as if you were helping a client. And what happens what I found is happens is that people then like, like, Oh, this Ryan person, he answers a lot of questions and like his answers are really good. You know, not that doesn't always happen. Some people are really, you know, not nice about your answers sometimes, but mm. for the most part, <laughs> uh, you know, they, you know, people will be like, Oh, he's, he seems pretty knowledgeable. And then they'll kind of like look on your profile and like, Oh, he's a coach. And, and then they end up on your website and then they, you know, fill out your intake, your, your discovery call, Form and then you know before you know it, you have a client right that's like my number one hack for like it doesn't even involve creating content honestly but it does involve like putting yourself out there as someone who's knowledgeable to some degree and it just you know providing whatever reasonable knowledge you have to the, the people that are asking for help um and like people take notice of people take notice of that and i've gotten countless number of clients just by just by being someone who offers assistance to them and of course I do get, I do get clients because, you know, I share blog posts, people read them and, and then, you know, they come to be that way as well. Um, podcasts are also great. If you can somehow, you know, you, you know, someone who hosts a podcast or get on a podcast um, and you can talk about your experience or something you're knowledgeable in or a topic or whatever like that. I've gotten a couple of clients from that as well. Um, and um, yeah, I think that answers that, those questions. The other question was about the software that I use. So uh, the two, most useful pieces of software that I run my, or three most pieces of software that I run my business on is Coach Catalyst, um, uh, Chronometer, and then uh, Acuity Scheduling for all the scheduling and calendar and stuff like that. And then for like payments, I use PayPal, but you, you can create a PayPal business account for free. It's, you know, they take a small chunk of of the the, the money you take in, but, you know, it's simple and easy to use. So um, that would be oh, the other helpful. piece. And Sarah says, this is exactly how I get clients also. She gets over half from literally one local Facebook group. Oh, that's interesting. So like a local Facebook group Mm -hmm. in her region. 
See, and when yeah. I hear from both of you in that in that piece, it's like you're showing up and you're engaging. So you're being of service and you're 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 giving it away. And that's wonderful. People, people are like, oh, who's this Ryan? You know, yeah. let me, let me, you know, poke around and see what he's up to. And and over time that 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 translates into people liking, trusting, and and wanting more from you. Yep. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Just putting yourself out there. So this is great. It's yep. great. And then Terrence is saying, you said the way you were eating keto was hurting your health. What specifically was going on? I'm thinking mm -hmm. I may need to moderate from my keto focused eating since I'm dealing with a few issues that started around the time I started eating this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for me, it was um, just a mismatch between my activity level and the food that I was able to eat while eating keto. Right. One of the benefits of keto, which I, I, I think the keto diet is, an, you know, has amazing health benefits for a lot of people. Um, but it's not for everyone. Right. Uh, and for me, you know, one of the benefits of, of eating keto is that it can be very satiating. You can get full very fast. And that's why people can see a, a significant amount of weight loss when eating a keto diet is like, they just, they eat less. Right. Um, and so uh, that's great when you're, overweight and you need to lose weight but when you're already a lean athlete who's you know putting in a lot of you know volume from exercise i was just not able to eat enough food to, to match the activity that i was trying to do mm -hmm. and so my you know my testosterone all my hormones my testosterone my thyroid were just all down regulated because my body literally did not have enough fuel to to create them um, and it was just prioritizing other things like keeping me alive <laughs> uh, and fueling my body when I was like going to go out and run 13 miles. That type of thing. So um, I wasn't able to eat enough food by just, you know, completely eliminating carbohydrates for virtually eliminating carbohydrates from my diet. Um, and so I, over the, you know, it was not an easy journey. A lot of this is, you know, I was just talking to someone else about this earlier today is basically like if I was to give if someone was to ask me what's the most valuable thing to becoming a coach it's like getting us I would say go get a psychology degree or something like that because like it wasn't that I didn't like carbohydrates it was just I had this mental barrier from everything that I've heard over the past you know x, x years that carbohydrates were evil and I couldn't get past that you know it took me a long time it's not that I couldn't I just took me a long time to get over that yeah. to realize that like having a sweet potato and a banana and eating a bunch of fruit and having white rice, um, those foods were not going to hurt my health. Right. And, and for a while, it just took a long time to get out of that, get that message out of my head. Um, because in the context, in my context, for me as an individual, those foods were beneficial to my health. Um, but for a vast majority of people, you know, that might not be the right way to eat because they have prediabetes or they already have type two diabetes and like those foods may negative affect their health. But you, this is where the individualization and understanding where the person is comes into play. You can't just universally say that no one should ever eat a banana again, because right. that can actually be detrimental to them um, and overly restrictive. And they, they might be really fine eating bananas. Right. Um, and so once I started to incorporate you know, those more whole food carbohydrates back into my diet. Um, I saw all my health markers improve, uh, my energy improve. Uh, I was to be able to be, yeah, sleep improve vastly. My, um, you know, my ability to be a, a good father and husband improved. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my performance and my training and my exercise, my, you know, performance in my races all improved. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of, personally what I saw right for someone else and you know you know you have to you have to kind of I don't know what you're you were dealing with Terrence but you know those are those are some things to look out for is just you know what's your energy levels like you know how is your how's your performance in the gym if that's something you're you know uh you know concerned about how's your sleep um do you find you have weird food cravings like food cravings can be another thing is like just overly restrictive and like man, I really eat a banana, but bananas are evil. Like type, I don't know why I, I, bananas are one of my favorite foods. So I just constantly use that as an example, 
but um you know like and then you find yourself you know i can never eat a banana but then all of a sudden you just find yourself like face first in a chocolate cake because it's just so much restriction you can't deal with it anymore that type of thing mm. um yeah so those are all be signs and symptoms that i would kind of pay attention to in that in that type that area oh that's great yeah it's heron says especially that's that's kind of where he's at especially with fruit mm -hmm. yeah mm. yeah happy to chat more terrence if you need you know if you want to chat a little bit more about that it's can be a tough thing to navigate for sure right and and then to you know also like i love hearing what you were saying around you know then you know from the group program you signed on a one-year client and mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm, I am so appreciating getting to work with people for a year, more than one year, like really slow things down because it allows even, you know, the space for, for the, for the partnership to shift as well. Like where, you know, maybe keto was working or a lower carb lifestyle was working, but during training, we need to up the carbs and such. Like, I know yeah. this was especially important for me. I went keto uh, for medical great reasons to support, you know, seizures. And, mm. you know, after being, you know, I'm coming up on four years seizure free. And well, congratulations. Like you were, thank you so much. You know, what it, it worked for a while. And then it just, you know, and like the lower carb, lower carb, it helped to finally rid the seizures. But then over time, I was noticing things. And I was like, Oh, I've got to bring some fruit back in and some whole food carbs. And it was some undoing here. But I'll always mm. remember that first orange I like <laughs> peeled and I ate it and it was like, oh, dropped to my knees. <laughs> <It's like laughs> nature's, you know, gift. And so it's, and it's been an unwinding, like, ooh, where are the mm. sweet potatoes, like certain parts of my cycle, being a, mm. you know, a menstruating woman still, but that's even changing over time as I age. And, you know, versus like how much output am I really doing if I'm, you know, because I too, I was like, oh, bananas here. I live in Hawaii. Bananas, bananas are <laughs> a thing. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and how like also just how healing that was to my guts too, you know, mm -hmm. after not having them for so long, like then when having them, it very much felt like a healing food and, mm -hmm. and not having a coach to like walk through that with me with could be could could get a little like hairy so I love yeah. hearing that you have a coach also I think that that's something important as coaches for us to also have support in our life and it just kind of feeds the big beautiful cycle yeah yeah I think to your original point I, I originally started off with like doing three month coaching packages like three and six or something like that and I was like I can't no one was making enough progress in three months. Yeah, we're just getting started. <laughs> like, yeah, we're just like by month three, we're just kind of getting going here. Um, and so, yeah, I was like, I, I, I quickly nixed three months and went six and six months in a year. Um, and you know, I, I give people the flexibility of like, I'll we can split up the payments however you want. Like PayPal makes that super easy. You want to do biweekly, monthly? You want to pay it? six month increment i don't care like just tell me what you want right we'll make it work um but yeah doing three months was just personally i found for the people i was working with, i was like we can't make the progress that we need to make um and so long term yeah because the the, the whole thing the journey is so i actually just wrote a blog post released it this week of like the journey to health is like a lifelong endeavor like realizing that it's a long-term process and like the slower you take it is generally the better. Yeah. Um, and so working in like six month and year increments is like, I seem to be a su <clears throat> sweet spot for one-on-one -on -one coaching because it does evolve. Like what, what the approach that you might take in the first few weeks, it might not be the right thing. You might have to change course. Yeah. Um, and so you have to, you have to allow, I think allowing for that time to grow with your client um, and, and together as a team is important um and you yeah, it's like really a big experiment you try one thing and then you keep you keep adjusting that dial where it's like left to our own like we're like oh forget it just going back to what was and it's just it kind of mm. just keeps us in status quo whereas like yeah. having a partner like on on your health goals you mm -hmm. know and, and terrence is saying his main issue is constant widespread long-term body pain tight sore mm -hmm. muscles mm -hmm. yeah uh, and when I hear tight sore muscles and body pain and keto in the same context, I almost always think of electrolytes too. So mm -hmm. Terrence, I would be, you know, what do your electrolyte intake look like? Um, just, just throwing that out there. 
that would be just off the cuff you know Agreed. Uh, but yeah i agree oh that's great and you know i heard you say <clears throat> something earlier about, oh, here's something I wanted to ask. You know, you see your clients twice a month, which that's mm -hmm. the rhythm I've found also. Terrence is saying thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, but the the rhythm around by, you know, twice a month. And sometimes though, especially when we first start, like I can, I've found that like 14 days can be a little bit long for people when they're out on their own. So we talk a little bit about like, how you structure like the your um, your frequency and connection with your clients yeah so twice a month every other week is like when we do our zoom calls um but i always you know i i think all my clients at this point have my my cell phone number um and so if they need anything in between that time they're struggling with something um I'm just text message away. So they, you know, they'll text me and be like, Hey, you know, I, this came up or we need to change this, or, you know, maybe we need to jump on a call, you know, earlier than two weeks, yeah. completely fine with me. Right. Um, the, the two week cadence, I feel like gives me, gives an opportunity for them to go off and actually put in a real effort to whatever we happen to be working on that week, like to actually implement it and like, you know, get used to it, you know, wrap their brain around, like, you know, it, it takes it takes change takes a little bit of time and so giving them like that two weeks to go off and be on their own and um i feel like is a good a good a good amount of time for them to put in some effort into whatever we happen to be working on that week yeah. and not say that they're going to accomplish the goal in two weeks but like you know it at least lets them start moving in the direction then we can yeah. check in in two weeks and be like okay how's it going is it you know going in the right direction do we need to make more tweaks? Do we need to change it by a different approach? That type of thing. But I feel like giving a, a two week, you know, uh, chance for the, the client to go off and implement and then check in. Um, but like I said, if, if they, I always encourage them, if they have anything that comes up in the meantime, we need to, we need to chat. Like we'll do it over text. And if we can't do it, solve the problem over text, we'll then jump on a call and phone call or zoom call or whatever and, and we'll we'll figure it out so i really like this it, it, it's you know it, it exemplifies um um flexibility and autonomy too it's like you're empowering the clients with with the time and space in between right, and right. heather says thanks for opening the conversation about the importance of one eating plan does not fit all we have to listen to our body and know that we are outputting all who all whole foods can be healing Good to know there is wiggle room away from strict adherence to the keto plan in the primal health community world. There you yes, go. Heather. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Can't agree more either. I like that. I like that, that statement. All whole foods can be healing. That's a good one. Right. Yeah. And to listen to the body, you know, here yeah. we are as a, as a guide and, you know, if we can support people in tuning into their body's beautiful wisdom, mm -hmm. You know, that Absolutely. these organs are communicating to, to us in all moments, you know, the head can like lie to us all day long. The heart can like mislead us, but the guts, the guts mm. know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're running the show for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we've got yeah. just a couple more minutes and I want to make mm. sure to thank Ryan. And I heard you share earlier, you know, it's, um, please share how people can stay stay um, mm. in touch with you and learn more from you, Ryan. Yeah. So um, the, the best place to go, if you want to keep up with everything that I'm putting out is go to rjbhealth.coach. Um, and right at the top, there's going to be a link that says newsletter, click on that, that link and then enter your email address. And that's my newsletter. And then all the content that I put out, the videos, blog posts, etc., go out through my newsletter. Um, I find that works best because then you don't have to stalk me on social media. You don't have to <laughs> be on social media. You don't have to worry that you miss something, you know, that I posted because the algorithm didn't work or anything like that. It all goes right into your inbox. Um, and so that's like the best place to, to keep up with me. But if you do want to follow me um, uh, on social media, uh, I'm, uh, you know, if you search for RJB health coaching is you, you'll probably find me, but um, it's, RJB Health Coaching on Instagram, RJB Health Coaching on Facebook. And so those are the two platforms that I kind of spend most of my time on. Wonderful. I put that information in the chat box. We've got rjbhealth.coach 
find the yeah. newsletter tab and sign up because that's the best place that you can get all of Ryan's content directly to your inbox without having to like go look for it online and such. And then yes. also with Instagram and Facebook, it's RJB Health Coaching. And we're so grateful. And for, you know, we're so happy for this coach's corner and for a chance for this community to come together and have some shared reality, not only around approach to how we serve in this profession, but also like growing our business. And it's felt so relaxing to listen to your story, listen to your wisdom, Ryan. And I heard you say that you've been doing this for over eight years. And so mm. for all of those that are here today, please um, make sure to, you know, consider the, the primal health coaching, all access pass, you know, because this, I'm hopeful that, that, that RJB health has, has his own course within primal health one of these days and <laughs> get in on that primal health, um, all access pass. You'll be a part of that. And so much more. There's just, just the, the courses just keep, you know, refining and, you know, Mark Sisson and his, his leadership is, um, I, I, is the cornerstone to this community. So thank you so much for for sharing your your passion, your love, and your um, your your relaxation around it. All takes time, Ryan. This has been so great. Great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate All it. All right. You take care, everybody. See you next time. Bye bye. All right.